All right. Well, thank you again for tuning into your weekly food stay talk hosted by me, Emily Ostrin, and sponsored by WHP Studios for private studio personal trainers in Andersonville, Chicago. Visit the link in our bio or website to sign up for a free nutrition or fitness consultation. Today, we have myself, Emily Ashman, registered dietitian, Will Harlow, sports coach and certified personal trainer, and Janelle Ramos, WHP Studios general manager and integrative health coach. Happy food day. How are you guys hey, doing everybody. today? Happy food day. Good. Happy food day. We got some sun after some rainy days. It's spring's coming soon. Spring's it's coming a, soon. It's a sprinkle <laughs> of sun. I love your optimism. <laughs> I'm like, it's been a weird week. Let's be real. <laughs> yeah, there's snow. <laughs> Ice, rain. Yeah. I went to... uh. I went to the opening day on, on Tuesday for the Brewers oh, cool. and it was pouring. It was <laughs> raining. My umbrella broke. Oh, like no. it was, it was not typical. You don't go to a game in the Midwest in April. Like, <laughs> you, don't. you do when you're a Brewers fan. Yeah. Super fan. Yeah, super fan. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a weird week. And I think when we were talking about this before we started recording, I was like, just, it's been this weird energy too. I know Janelle, you talked about that. Well, you've noticed it too. Yeah, it's been um, it's been like this extremism. I think is what we were all saying in communal. Yeah. Like, uh, it's either yes or no, and no in between, and just like, I don't know. It just feels like everybody's trying to get somewhere, but mm-hmm. somehow they're not talking about it like we're just in motion um and there is no congruence like there's like well what what is the point and what are we doing it's like I just gotta go and I'm like but where like what are we doing yeah yeah it, it's just a weird in in between and I think what we talked about was like that all or nothing thinking where it's you know one way or the other and there's it's like that gray area in between and yeah. uh I know I've had a few conversations this week, especially around food of like good foods versus bad foods. And I've been asking a lot of my people, like what, what is a neutral food? And I'm curious, like, what would you guys say is a neutral food for you? I'll go first. I'll let yeah. Will think on it. <laughs> it's an interesting I, question. What is a neutral food? I think for me, I had to ask you what it even meant beforehand, kind of like what it's like to think about it. But definitely, um, I love eggs. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't even understand my relationship and my passion with eggs, but it's like, I literally could eat them every day Um, and never have like this uh, fear or hesitance towards it because I think for me, I do see it as like, it's a safe, it's protein, it's easy, they're fluffy, they're tasty, like, it's, um, they can go for breakfast, lunch, dinner, like, they just work anywhere, so mm-hmm. that, that would be my go-to. I like that, yeah, I noticed a lot of, a lot of neutral foods are ones that can go anywhere, because I know I said, like, um, like, peanut butter, avocado, those are some some answers I've gotten. I know I said potatoes and I think you both looked at me like I was crazy that a potato was a neutral food. But when you think about the versatility of things of like, yeah, it could be breakfast, be lunch, it could be vodka if it's a potato. You know, it, it they, there's so many, like those are like my neutral foods are the ones that can go either way. Um, what but yeah, now that I've probably given up one of your yeah, I mean, as I, well. Like, <laughs> it, it really is kind of, uh, it's striking me in an interesting way of like, Every I say a food in my mind and it's like, oh, but I can, you know, I can see how some people would think about that. So I don't know, like celery, <laughs> you know, like wow. is a piece of celery <laughs> a neutral food? Like you, it's, it. how can, can celery ever be seen as bad? Can celery ever be seen as good? Are like, you thinking of a Bloody Mary right now? I'm just saying, like, I, I thought of a Bloody, Bloody Mary, Mary, to be completely I'm honest. Not, I'm not, it's like, yeah, celery, carrots, uh, lettuce, like a romaine lettuce. Like, mm-hmm. that's a neutral food, but... Yeah, I could see that one. Yeah, like, yeah, interesting. So, yeah, like, what, what is what is the, what's the neutral, what's the, the 
source of that question? Like, why are you, why are you asking people about that? Yeah. It's just a fun question to ask because we get so caught in this, like, I can only have good foods or bad foods. And then we get that shame of I'm a good or bad person when I only eat these certain foods. And it's, it's hard to not categorize them because we love to categorize things as in like this fits here and this fits there. But what if it fits in both cases, you yeah. know, like eggs, if you add, you know, load them up with butter and cheese, could it technically be bad food? Sure. If it's just like a, a hard boiled egg, could it be a good food? Sure. But it often sits in the middle, you know, for eggs. Um, but I think it's really hard for us to find that middle ground, especially with food of, I don't have an emotional response to either, either direction for this. Food. Right. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're so, and maybe that's what I was kind of struggling with of like, there is that everything's tied up in that emotion of, yeah, the good or bad or what you're, how you're feeling or how other people are feeling, seeing you eat that or what it's just like but then you say like i say celery carrots lettuce and sure like the 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 fiber of those the water intake of those is good but you know let's be honest there's not a ton of nutrition in those foods mm -hmm. so like neutral is kind of like i don't know this weird middle gray area where like you, 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 you can't just eat lettuce, uh, carrots and celery and have a nice, well-balanced diet, you know? So like, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have to have some quote unquote goods and bads in there. Uh, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting question. So that's yeah, an interesting, uh, way to think about it. And, yeah. and hopefully, hopefully the result of that question is that there isn't. You know, like everything can kind of be, you can kind of feel safe. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Safe. Right. You can kind of go back and forth, you know, between, yeah, I don't know, like what's, what's, what's the next question? The next part of that question to me is what's a bad food? What's a good food? You know, and like, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's very interesting kind of edge of the, edge of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. uh, commentary and thought process which is to me that seems like a hard place to live that seems like a hard place to exist on those those edges i hear it as safe like it's a safe space yeah yeah like it's a safe zone so it's like you're not going to the extreme right so you're not going to the extreme of like this is the best of the best mm -hmm. because sometimes that is too much and pressure and then you're not going to the worst of the worst because then that just doesn't feel good, right? At the end. So what's your what's the middle lane? What's the the safety point? Mm -hmm. But is that really safe? Is the question. Mm -hmm. And I guess for me, like the reason I ask about this is because oftentimes people will say, if I eat, if I eat pizza all the time, like I'm just I'm a bad person, I'd feel bad about myself, like I don't feel good. And I always like to flip it around and go, well, if you eat salad every day, all day, you're probably not going to feel great either. You're probably going to be on the toilet quite a bit, first of all, but you're not going to feel good. You're going to have very low energy. So no matter what direction we swing in, like too much of anything is not going to make you feel good. And I think we forget that because there's all this like guilt and shame of the good foods versus bad foods, but any food can be too much and not make you feel good. Yeah. Yeah. So and then, I mean, and that kind of, you know, why I asked you guys this is because it also branches into your areas too, you know, where if we, if we don't do any movement, it doesn't feel good. But if we do too much movement, it also feels bad. You know, if we cope in negative ways, we don't feel good afterwards. But if we do too much self-care, we'll use skincare, you're going to have quite a bit of reactions going on, you know, like there is too much of a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, you know, um, for us and the way that we're set up as, you know, private studio personal trainers, like the goal is to get people on a consistent schedule that works with their life. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I, would it would it be great to have someone come in seven days a week for two hours a day? 
Probably not, right? Would it would it be is it enough to have someone come in for a half hour once a once a day or once every 10 days? You know, like well, we can probably find another half hour in there to maybe get two times, you know, and so right, yeah. those two edges of absolutely nothing or the bare, bare minimum to this overkill is uh is not what we want to is not how we want to support you and not how we want um movement and exercise to be integrated into your life and your schedule yeah and i know i can't quote exactly i was reading this last night because i'm doing a course on intuitive eating but um it's like the amount of time we do movement and it's it doesn't have to be all at once either. You know, we don't need that hour of movement. You can break it up into those 10, 15 minute chunks to still get the same benefits of it. And I think that's what we forget too, when it comes to specifically movement and thinking I have to be at the gym for two or three hours a day. And it's like, I mean, maybe if you own a gym, you're probably there for quite a, a long time. Maybe if you're working on performance and training for something specific, yeah, but you don't, not every person needs to do that. Yeah, yeah. Consistency is more important than intensity. Yeah. Like, yeah, like if you, because if you go all in and intense and lift heavy every time or, you know, run a marathon every day or something, you know, like it's just not, it's, it clearly doesn't work. I think everybody understands the concept of overtraining. And then on the other side, you can't just, or, you know, ideally no one is doing absolutely nothing. You know, at least you're finding something that you can do consistently throughout the week uh, to, you know, challenge yourself a little bit and improve yourself, a li- improve your strength, improve your mobility a little bit, your heart health um, week to week, week over week. I think, um, <clears throat> it's interesting what you're both saying and then you said it just now Emily intuitive um eating mm-hmm. consistency in movement um and like what we're talking in terms of living in the middle ground sort of right being safe but not really safe and extremism expectations <laughs> boundaries it's like all those things get thrown in um but the centering point being intuitive right it's so like that's the part that I feel as a whole we tend to not give enough time and attention to um because that's the place where your body's going to speak to you the most and we need to learn how to listen to those cues I think one of the last ones we talked about was triggers as well And so like, those are reminders, you know, as to where you should go and where you shouldn't go, because the the moral of the story is that it's, you're always in this like flux, right? There is like, that's living to me. That's how I view it. Um, And when you're in a sort of like a a plateau, uh, that's kind of when you need to pivot and that's when you need to alter and that's like your body giving you the the signal that, you know, sort of like when you're saying in a neutral food, it's like, now you need to go a little bit this way. Or you need to go a little bit this way. Like that's where all the fun is. <laughs> I know, like, when you're really, right, but, right. but it takes a long time. You know, it takes, I, it took me a while to get that, to really hone in on like, that's what this is all about. It's just constantly gauging to see, um, what feels good, you know, because that'll change, right? Like that will always change. Uh, and so it's reminding ourselves, how do we ask ourselves what feels right? Um, what feels intuitive to where do I want to be today? How do I want my movement to flow, you know, a little bit better, right? Versus the next day I might be tired, and maybe I had a lot of stress, or maybe I went through a lot of things. So maybe my movements should be less. Or and then going back with eating as well, you know, 
Today, I might want some comfort. I might need something that it just is. Instead of taking it to these places where, again, we talked about boundaries and expectations. It's like when you're living from that center point, it's almost like a setup. It's like, I got to do all these things because I believe and I should and it's I'm supposed to versus when you're in the most intuitive side, I think you just feel more comfortable like with your decision. I think that's like the goal, right? Overall, like be comfortable with your decision at the end of everything because you got, you can make another one. Like you can just, yeah. it's not set in stone. Yeah, yeah, change is change is uh life like changes change it's the only thing that's consistent is yeah is your change and um if you want to do that if you want you know if you want to embrace the changes um taking that first step toward whatever the change is um being able to do that over and over again mm -hmm. is the is the consistency so like mm -hmm. Like if, if, if you work out or if you do one session a week uh, for a, a month, you're going after a week or two, you're going to be like, well, maybe I can do something else on some other day because one is going to feel very achievable at that point. And mm -hmm. then you get up to, you add in a second day, maybe not even a full session, just taking your dog for a walk or playing with your kids or whatever. Now that gets easier. And then the a lifestyle that's based on, I don't know, sedentary and screen time turns into more of an active and engaged lifestyle where you're doing stuff and going out um, both for exercise and movement or trying new foods or, you know, eating, I don't know, eating differently or uh, letting yourself enjoy what you're having. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, it was an interesting interesting topic today. Interesting topic of being like stuck in this middle this middle part where you're supposed to be, um, or I you know stuck on the ends on on the edges of good or bad or on or off. When really the easy way is like the or the or not the easy way, but reason the more the more comfortable way for us, I think, mm -hmm. uh, is the middle way is in the middle, you know, like yeah. letting yourself go from side to side and be, be uh, aware of the consistent change. Like a fuel gauge, right? When you go this yeah. way sometimes, yeah. you're going too fast if you're driving and you need to slow down to come back to the middle or then you're going on empty and you need to refuel to go back to the middle, but you can't stay in the middle because the, right. the middle is just, kind of dull <laughs> yeah. yeah you need those those pivot points yeah um and I know even with like as you were talking while I was thinking about you know movement and exercise you know I feel like sedentary and like exercise are like the two ends of that and in the middle is that that movement so while you're not you might not be exercising every day you're definitely mm -hmm. moving every day you know whether it's that you're walking around your house or putting laundry away or letting the dog out and I think we forget that we do so much movement during the day and we just don't realize it, you know, and that's, that's a part of that awareness piece of like, what am I actually doing? So I know I've had that conversation a few times with people of like, keep track of how much you're moving throughout the day. Cause I bet you're moving quite a bit, Yeah. Um, but we get so caught up on, it needs to be exercising, you do burning calories, you need to be sweating, you know, exhausting myself, but you still get the benefit from the, the other areas too. And if you do, if you do start training or, you know, exercising with a plan, I guess is maybe what that is, or moving, you know, for strength specific enhancements or cardiovascular specific enhancements, it will make the other. Oh yeah. The, yeah. The other movements, you know, just you know, like your normal daily movement, um, more enjoyable. I would, I would yeah. hope you know, that's, that's the goal, right. Of like, mm -hmm. maybe, that, maybe the laundry basket feels lighter, maybe, you know, this week, or maybe the, you know, what the grocery bags feel <laughs> like you're carrying them up to the third floor or what, you know, like those kind of, those kind of things. And so, 
yeah. ideally that is yeah supporting that uh supporting those daily life movements yeah i think it's um what's interesting too is like we were talking about the extremism and so that busy that gets bottled up into yeses and nos right and so it's like we walk around feeling like we again expectation and boundaries like you know boundaries are interesting because boundaries are usually put into place as thinking these are things that we have to put against other people when it's really about what's your 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 pivot points like how does that in relationship to you what are your yeses and your nos and so the idea that your yeses and your nos have to stay completely in format every single day exactly the same that might work for some people there there are people that like that type of regimen in life and it flows and it functions for them and and so it is but because it works for that person doesn't necessarily mean that it's set up for the other individual and unfortunately like in the health and wellness industry what we find is that those ideas those visuals um mm -hmm. they really get played out in a way where they fit one model and you're not incorporating that everybody in your bio individuality, right? It's like everyone's different. And so everyone has to find their own fluid form as to how they want to, you know, push to the extreme, you know, burnout. Like, what does that always look like? And that's practice. Like, to me, that's a matter of like, um, getting into, that's what I mean about being in, in, in your intuition, like just, trying things out and then knowing where your yeses and nos are um and trust me i'm not speaking as an expert i'm learning this as i as i talk about it but learning what they are and then they and they change like some days my yes for you know last couple of months suddenly might be like i don't want to do that anymore i'm just not interested i want to try something different it's like yes and no doesn't mean like in stone concrete it just it's just the answer for the moment and for where you're at present current day and then you keep switching that around and I find that across the board movement life balance with food as well you know there are days where my body does not want me to eat certain things and I say yes <laughs> and then I and then I pay for it in some way and then I'll say no the next day because I'm like, mm, okay, it's just, it's just listening at across the board. I think no matter what, um, there's no, uh, there's no definitive. Yeah. I think that's, a, that's such a good point of, uh, I always think of like lactose intolerance with that, like so many people are willing, yeah, it's worth it to me, but the next day it's definitely not worth it. But that's really what it is, is making those choices of like what's good for right now rather than it's always a no or it's always a yes. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Hey, good. Happy spring. Happy spring. <laughs> spring. Clean out your skeletons. Happy yeah. spring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Clean them out. Clean them out. Like let's let's have a, let's have a good year. Let's have a good, let's have a good little uh you know, second, second half of the year, second uh, quarter of the year here. That's yeah. And it's let's great. do some grounding. I think we did yeah. an exercise last time and it was like, you just, just take a moment to take a step back. Don't feel like you have to move in the, in the fast, like it, you know, yeah. like when you're driving, right. And everybody's pushing you to be in the fast lane. And if it's not uncomfortable, just merge over to the right or to the left yeah. You know, like let other people move at their pace, but don't mm -hmm. feel like you have to go in rhythm with it because then we're all being polarized and it, it, no, there's got to be some, some. Yeah. One at a time. Yeah. One step at a time. Yeah. One step at a yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. And if anyone's asking you what's wrong with you, just say you're thinking about your neutral food. And it's taken <laughs> that, got me. that got me today. That got That's me. A great question. That's a great question. Very thought provoking. Very thought provoking. That got. I'm still thinking about it. 
<laughs> it's hard. It's a hard it's one. Like, I've had people yeah, go for like, a week. Every, if every no, food like, he eats <laughs> now, he's going to be like, are you my neutral? Yeah, food? is this neutral? <laughs> like, interesting. Why? Yeah. Why do, why do we have to have that? But we do. Like we do. It just, it's just part of how we assign, I don't know, emotion or value to. Grounding. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You got to go back home always. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's an interesting thing. So that's your that's your prompt for the week is what is a neutral food for you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> mm, that's good. All right. Well, I hope you have a lovely weekend. Happy yeah. Foods Day to you both. Yeah. Happy Foods Day. Okay. And, uh, go do go do something crazy, and then do something boring crazy on the other side and then come right back in here go do something boring yeah. and dull yeah. and do something crazy because then you'll balance it out and then sit in yeah, the middle and super crazy, about it. Super boring. Yeah. Yeah. and then come back here yeah <laughs> okay. all right take care bye-bye. 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 Bye-b